Hello you lovely people and welcome. In this video I'll be doing a review of the Aeroplane Heaven Republic P47D Thunderbolt. Now um, I've been meaning to do a review on this aircraft for a while but uh, after initial release there were murmurings of a big update coming to change a few things. This video will not be um, a review of those changes, this will be a review of the aircraft as a whole. So I've held back until this release. So let's have a look at the liveries. I know that they have added some liveries because they've added the Malcolm hood as well. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you've got fifteen of um, liveries with the traditional canopy. And then we have the additional Malcolm hood. Uh, if you don't know what the Malcolm hood is, that's what's the, the, the canopy that was used on the Spitfire. Um, I'm a bit confused because I thought the Malcolm hood was added to the Royal Air Force Thunderbolt 1 variant. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case of both uh, our, uh, United States Army Air Force um, liveries. Uh, we don't have a Malcolm Hood for the Royal Air Force livery, which is, where are you, what, there it is. So we've got the traditional OTU um, livery there. Um, but I am curious as to seeing how the Malcolm Hood looks in, in the game. So, uh, plenty of liveries and with the additional Malcolm Hood, uh, two variants. So uh, I'm going to jump in the 405th fighter group variant um, Malcolm Hood. So let's uh, jump in at Quacksford and uh, have a look around. Let's so we'll start with inside the cockpit and it looks nicely modelled and quite nicely textured. Um, we'll just have a look around from left to right. So we have our trims here, all three. Uh, we've got flap lever and gear lever here. Uh, we've got our intercooler um, state gauges here, which can be controlled by these two switches. We've got gun camera control there. Uh, main and auxiliary fuel tank selector there. External um, fuel tank selectors there. Um, next to that we've got P47 uh, options, we'll come back to that. Uh, obviously our throttle quadrant here, we've got mixture, uh, prop pitch and boost um, lever there. Um, this is new, uh, they have changed the throttle lever to, with the addition of water injection, so that'll be interesting. Um, coming down from there we've got our um, circuit breaker uh, box with internal and external um, lighting uh, fuel pump there uh, we've got an alternator pitot heat and dilute oil diluter there and as I say internal external lighting there and with the, the gun rate cool power um, up from that we have our voltmeter there our magneto battery switch turbine overspeed light um, which apparently is supposed to keep blinking by using the boost um, lever. This is all new to me, um, but it's not to um, be uh, pushed past the uh, throttle position, um, apparently, according to the manual. Whiskey compass, um, which can be calibrated. We have a turbo RPM, and we have our fuel quantities in... Uh, main tanks and auxiliary altimeter uh, our speed in miles per hour this is our uh, pressure gauge whiskey compass again I guess one of these will be a backup turn slip indicator our water pressure for, water, for the water injection manifold pressure a VVI artificial horizon uh, suction carb air RPM our oil temperature and pressure, uh, oil in pounds and um, fuel. 
our cylinder head temperature and we've got a floodlight dimmer there. Uh, our gun sight, again we'll come back to that. We have our primer and cow flaps here. Under that we've got our oxygen blinker and our oxygen um, cylinder pressure. Our emergency oxygen control and available oxygen, so flick that and that'll turn the blinker on. Coming across here, um, we can't actually use this uh, radio box, but if you click it, you get a small uh, comm radio, covers the oxygen blinker there, so that you can use it. Our tail wheel uh, lock and unlock there. And come back here, we've got our recognition lights of red, amber and green. You can change those to steady or blinking. A uh, picture of a lady that seems to have been um, dropped down the back there. Either side of the canopy, this is the same with the standard or the Malcolm. You can either open it fully by clicking there and then fully closing it by clicking there, or you can use the uh, drag option up here, which is a bit awkward for me. Um, okay, it's a bit odd. Um, the sounds keep going even after it's closed. Um, but yeah, it's there. You go. It's a bit, a bit awkward to drag f backwards and forwards. Whereas you can just go um, fully open, or if you fancy it, you can go fully closed. Makes life a little bit easier. And I forgot to mention up here, we've got our obviously our start switch, which has two uh, stages: energize and engage. Um, and down here, obviously, we've got our flight stick and our jets and levers for left uh, pylon, right pylon, belly pylon, and then we've got part brake in the middle there. So let's get on to the options. So flick the switch here, and a little uh, electronic flight bag appears. This is where we can um, select our ordnance for the wing tanks and the center uh, a wing pylons and center pylon. So on the wing tips, I will. This is a rinse and repeat for the other pylon. So we go up one. We've got a seven, 75 gallon fuel tank. Up from that, we've got our 108 gallon fuel tank. Up from that, 150 gallon. Then it goes to 500 pound bomb, and then 1,000 pound bomb. So that's everything for that. Um, and like I said before, it's just the same over this side. Um, go to the center one we can have our 75 gallon fuel tank 108 gallon 150 gallon or a whopping 200 gallon uh, flat tank there and then we can have a 500 uh, pound bomb or a thousand pound bomb and with this switch here we can take remove the pylon so now the wings underneath will have nothing uh, there at all or we can put the pylons back on uh, we come up from here, we have a gun sight options. We've got the MB3, which it currently has. We, we flick that down, uh, change it to the Mark 8. Okay, we've got an iron sight there and a uh, different uh, sight there, or we can change to GPS. So flick that back on. And for the pilot, uh, you can select wartime, which comes as uh, standard with the actual aircraft, or you can have default entirely up to you. I'll keep it as wartime. And I'll show you the wartime one when we get on the outside view. Okay, so I think that is it for the inside. Um, externally, um, we can remove the engine cowling, so I'll, I'll do that before we jump out. Um, we'll close the P47 options. And yeah, that's it for inside. So let's uh, let's go and have a look. As you can see, the cowlings are off, and you can see the Pratt and Whitney um, R2800 there, which seems to be nicely detailed and textured, um, which is a nice little addition if you so wish to show that off. Now um, I've got the pylons. Uh, showing just for the sake of it at the moment but looking around the aircraft I mean the livery is 
gorgeous and the aircraft has been fantastically modelled uh, the intercooler doors are shut at the moment I'll show you those once the engine's started but yeah um, beautiful aircraft um, as you would expect and um, yeah very nicely done so let's jump back in um, we'll get some we'll get the cowling back on get the um, pylons hidden and uh, we'll open everything up right so we've got engine started cow flaps open flaps fully down there are eight stages and we've got intercooler doors open at the back here uh, just to show you everything that can be opened so we'll have a listen to the sounds now so um, externally first then internally so make sure that the brakes are on uh, pull back on the stick throttle up we've got full prop pitch sorry I had looked down there Beast. Okay, so that's about half throttle. Could try a little bit more. going right okay so my throttle's all the way to the wall so that's full manifold pressure let's bring the prop pitch back all the way that halfway prop pitch Bringing it back in again. Yeah, lovely roar. Right. Let's throw it all the way back. Okay, so let's listen to that internally. I forgot to mention the World War II uh, pilot that comes as standard with the aircraft there. Um, again, I could change it to my default, which is Maverick, but I'm not going to do that. So let's jump back in. Okay, so I'm going to first try it with the canopy open. Stick back. Listen to that. Bring the boost lever on so the uh, light's blinking. Water injection um, made the fan manifold pressure jump quite a bit there. Right, we'll bring that down now. Don't want to kill the engine. As you can see, boost lever needs to come back. Right, okay, so I'm going to ease off the stick for a minute. Okay, we're going to close the canopy and have a listen then. Okay, just do this quickly. not bad at all I really like those sounds and then again there are people that complain just for the sake of it um, and not satisfied with everything but you know each to their own I suppose um, but yeah let's um, get this thing up in the air and stick the landing light on now 
Um, unfortunately, this thing doesn't have the same uh, tail dragger physics as what you'd find with um, Flying Iron. As uh, that's their own coding. Um, this is all purely done by uh, rudder, uh, rudder connecting to tail wheel sort of situation. So it's instant. You don't have to throttle up to get the uh, the wind blowing over the, the, the rudder to get it to turn. So make sure the wheel is unlocked. So it's locked, locked, unlocked. Okay, so let's make our way out to the end of the runway. That can break off. Okay, as you can see. Um, steering is instant which is a shame really because it does uh, detract from the actual um, immersion really of flying a warbird and making taxiing way too easy but bring the flaps all the way up I've counted eight notches um, but that's only because I'm using um, a, a button for each stage of flap. Um, I don't know if this is a, a matter of holding down the lever to get it to. Um, yeah, okay, I get that now. No, um, you can do it from the inside um, and hold it until you're, you're satisfied at where it's at, but unfortunately for me, I can't be doing that. So, uh, flaps are up. Uh, we'll shut the cooler doors. Unfortunately, this takes a little bit of time. Same with the oil cooler. Okay, and as you can see, it does the same with the bottom there. Right, as you can see, the flaps are up. Uh, inner cooler doors are closed and we are ready to roll so um, let's get this thing lined up on the runway and get in the air right. Zealous there. Zero the altimeter out. Okay, let's make sure everything is good to go. Coolers are shut. Okay, yep, all good. Switch on the oxygen. Right then, let's see if we can get this thing up in the air then. Go back on the stick. Brakes off. <coughs> Forgot to lock the tail wheel. It usually helps. Charlie. Right, we're up. Gear up. That was uh, a bit hairy. Trim out. Shut those cow flaps. Slightly, don't want to blow the manifold. Lovely view from this Malcolm Hood, I've got to say. Get the 
reticule on. Yes. Yeah, that's. You might as well have an iron sight for that. Is that the same for the other options? Don't get me wrong, but that looks like that's been nicked out of an SU-25 or, an, you know, um, their fixed gun uh, setting on their HUD. Yeah, that doesn't look great. Not too impressed with the uh, the gun sight and the gun animations aren't brilliant either. They really aren't. Um, Far from impressed with that. Boost on a little bit. Okay, so we'll turn that off. We'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stick the GPS in just to get that out of the way. Let that load in. And we're going to um, close that off. Right then. Okay, so we'll smooth and good to go I mean it's it's the jug it's not this isn't the most um, elegant fighter in the world so don't expect Spitfire like performance um, this thing really excelled low to the ground um, don't get me wrong it is a it's a great great fighter um, let's try it with the water boost. Yeah, it's all right. Don't get me wrong, Aeroplane Heaven have made a, a decent P-51 and this doesn't detract from that and also this is fine in its own right but having been um, spoiled by flying iron to be honest this doesn't really reach to those heights don't get me wrong, it's a nice aircraft and it's nice to have in the hangar, but unfortunately it's not not flying iron uh, level. Let's bring that boost lever down, we're going to try and land this now. Grab the wrong one, whoops. Okay, so let's prop pitch back, throttle back. Flaps down. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed because I'm not. It's you know a jug, but at the same time we've been spoilt by uh, flying iron and. Uh, Really, it doesn't reach the the heights, like I said previously. I mean, it's not it's good in its own right, but it's not it's not up there, unfortunately. I think this is the first warbird that I've actually felt a little disheartened by. Um, but I I think purely it's because we've been spoiled. And expect too much. Whereas uh, Aeroplane Heaven have have done a, a very good job, I will say. Just there's a little bit, there's something niggling at me about this. Um, I can't quite put my finger on it.
I might have to go around again and come in too quick. Yep, let's do a go around. Okay, so let's try this again. So flaps fully down. Roll back. Bring that prop pitch back a tad. Tail wheel is in the lock position. See, we'll see. Oh, not one too bad. Actually, not a bad landing at all, to be fair. Considering. Okay, we'll bring the flaps up now. Use a differential braking just to get it away from the end of the runway there. Okay, put pitch back up. Unlock the tail wheel and get some noble, uh, tail wheel steering now. Brilliant. And we can taxi back. Um, like I said, um, this is the first warbird that I've really sort of felt a little bit disheartened about. And I can't quite put my finger on it. There is something there that's not quite. I don't know. Like I say, uh, we've been spoiled by uh, flying iron. Um, just going back, I was said that um, Aeroplane Heaven only released two all birds. Uh, my mistake. I've got the Spitfire Mark One A as well, um, which is okay. But yeah, okay. We'll go over it in the summary. Um, so we'll leave it here for now. Let's see if I can make this summary quick. Um, so it's priced at around about £27, um, close enough, there or thereabouts. Um, higher end of the spectrum in compared to some of the warbirds out there. Um, but again, you get quite a lot for your money. Sounds are fantastic. The model itself is brilliant. Textures are lovely as well. Uh, gun animations and sounds could have done without them. Uh, especially as we have tracer fire and better sounds and um, animations on other warbirds. Um, but it was nice of them to um, make an effort. Uh, we've got 15 liveries with the uh, greenhouse canopy, two with the Malcolm hood. Um, we finally got an RAF livery. Um, I'm pretty sure they use Malcolm hoods too. Um, in fact, I think that was the reason why the Malcolm Hood was a thing on the Thunderbolt because uh, we found that it was poor visibility, so we made the adjustment ourselves. Um, but yeah, like I say, sounds are good, flight dynamics are good, uh, this thing down in the weeds is fantastic, in the thicker air, uh, up high, mm, it's okay. Um, they did call this thing the jug for, no, uh, for a reason, the juggernaut, it's big, it's heavy, better down 
uh, low ground pounding than it would be uh, trying to shoot down ME 109s. Uh, okay against bombers, but um, definitely uh, ground attack is more of a speciality with this thing. It's um, a lot of fun to fly, and it's just it's nice to have it in the hangar. Finally got a um, thunderbolt. Um, we'll just have to wait and see if we get a bubble top at some point, uh, which would be good. And then the we could have the RAS version of the Thunderbolt too. I don't think there's really much else to mention. Um, thinking about it now, um, but yeah, I hope this piqued your interest and um, you got something from it. And if you got this far, thank you for watching. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.